Imagine we have a commutative ring R and let P be a proper ideal of this commutative ring. We say that P is a prime ideal if whenever the product AB is found inside of the prime ideal P, then it must have been true that the factor A was in the prime ideal or B was inside of it. So anytime a product is inside the ideal, one of the factors, not necessarily both, but at least one of the factors was inside of the prime ideal. And so I want you to try to understand what's happening here. This idea of a prime ideal is trying to generalize the notion of a prime number uh, because prime numbers we have defined for, of course, the ring of integers. We want to sort of generalize this uh, beyond that. Because if you take a prime number, we can look at the principal ideal generated by that. And this prime ideal is in fact, excuse me, this this uh, this ideal principal ideal generated by a prime number is in fact going to be a prime ideal that we're going to see in just a little bit. And so this idea of prime ideals is really has to do with Euclid's lemma. So Euclid uh, proved for prime numbers, these rational prime numbers, right? The, the ones inside the field of rational numbers, uh, just usual integers is what I'm talking about right now. Um, Euclid proved the property that if a prime number divides a product, A times B, then that implies that P divides A or um, we get that P divides B. So one of those two things happens. And so this idea of prime ideals is trying to capture that. We call an ideal prime if it satisfies Euclid's lemma right here, if it has the same property that Euclid uh, proved for prime numbers. And so what does this have to do with ideals? What does divisibility have to do with ideals? When you move to a principal ideal, it's exactly that. So imagine we have a principal ideal generated by some element P. And imagine that AB is inside of that, okay? Well, if AB is inside of that, that means there exists some element R inside the ring such that PR is equal to AB, okay? So that then gives us that P divides the product AB, okay? So, so if AB, if a number, if a number, this is in general, if a number is inside of someone's principal ideal, then the generator of that principal ideal divides that element, okay? So if AB is in there, you get that. So then if Euclid's lemma applied, right, if this element P is quote unquote prime, then that would mean that P divides A or P divides B. Now, if P divided A, that meant, oh, you have some P, uh, some PS is equal to A or something like that. In which case, then this would belong to the principal ideal generated by P. So my point is this idea of divisibility is equivalent to containment when you talk about principal ideals. Not every ideal is necessary principle, so this is the appropriate generalization. A, 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 an ideal is prime if it has this Euclid lemma-like property. Okay? And so it turns out that similar to our... Well, I should say that prime ideals have a property similar to what we talked about previously with maximal ideals. An ideal of a commutative ring with unity R is a prime ideal if and only if R mod P is an integral domain. So remember, an integral domain would be a commutative ring with unity with no proper divisors of zero. Or you could also say it satisfies the cancellation property. And so modding out by a prime ideal forms you an integral domain and vice versa. That is, if your quotient is an integral domain, you mod it out by a prime ideal. So assume that P, let's first do the, the, the first direction, right? Let's assume P is a prime ideal, and let's consider a product. So imagine we have a product of two, uh, two, uh, two cosets here, A plus P times B plus P, and imagine that equals zero plus P, aka P. So this is the zero element of the ring R mod P. So what we're saying here is, is we have a factorization of zero. If this was, in fact, an integral domain, we want to show that one of the cosets, A plus P or B plus P, was already the zero element, a.k.a. it was already P. All right? Now, these elements A and B are elements of the ring. And so if we summarize this, I mean, if you take A plus P and you times it by B plus P, this, the way that coset multiplication works is this becomes A, B plus P, and this is supposed to equal P. Well, when this happens with cosets, this actually means that A, B is an element of the prime ideal. But by assumption, since it's the prime ideal, this means that either A belongs to the ideal or B belongs to the ideal. Without the loss of general, let's just say it's A, it's commutative multiplication, doesn't matter the order here. So we're assuming that A plus P equals P. This is the zero element of R mod P. 
And so when you have this product right here, it's like, oh, here's the zero element. We have a product equal to zero. Well, one of the factors is equal to zero. So this then shows us that the ring R mod P has no proper divisors of zero since it's commutative, since it has unity, that then implies that it's an integral domain. And I will leave it as an exercise to the viewer here to prove the other direction. Um, assume that R mod P is an integral domain um, and then prove that P is a prime ideal. The calculation, the proof is very, very similar to what we just saw here. Uh, but I wanna make a connection to what we did in a previous video here. Uh, so we've just proven that uh, R mod P is a domain if and only if P is a prime ideal. We've, so, we, so we have that R mod P is an integral domain if and only if uh, P is a prime ideal, okay? Now, in a previous video, when we talked about maximal ideals, we learned that R mod P, where P is still the ideal in question here, this is a field if and only if um, R, excuse me, P, I should say, P is a maximal ideal, okay? But it's also important to remember that the, the set of fields, like the category of fields here, sits inside the category of integral domains. And particularly, every field is an integral domain because, because you have units, you have no zero divisors. So since every field is an integral domain, you then get the following argument, all right? Every maximal ideal is a prime ideal because you start off with a maximal ideal, okay? So M is a maximal ideal. So that's step one. So then you mod out by M, you get a field. You then infer that, oh, because it's a field, it's gonna be an integral domain. And then because it's an integral domain, that means M is prime. So in a commutative ring with unity, every maximal ideal is prime. And that'll be a very useful property as we go forward and study factorizations and domains, and which is gonna involve uh, statements about their ideals.